what advice would you give your 18 year old self? It, my advice would be to determine what your passion is. Um, whether it's a photography, writing, and pursue that passion. Because as you know, when you get a little bit older, you don't want to regret anything. Yeah. And if you can identify what that passion is, I find that you will have a better opportunity to succeed based on your commitment towards your passion. This is Entrepreneurs The Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing with Entrepreneurs The Playbook. And I finally have a happy partnership here on The Playbook, or at least they're pretending for me. This is Robert Goldman and Robert Godley. One goes by Rob, one goes by Robert. Uh, but they are the founders of one of my favorite companies, Cycle Bunny. And when I first saw the Cycle Bunny, I thought to myself, you know, I'm a re uh, recovering lawyer, an entrepreneur, a sports agent, all these different things. I'm like, and I'm a very positive person spiritually. And I'm looking at the, at the logo and I'm thinking, hmm. And I feel, I feel the quality, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I, I was caught. I'm like, gosh, I wonder how people are going to respond to me wearing that, that logo because this doesn't feel like Dave Meltzer. You know, I'm supposed to have this, you know, kind of positive thing or whatever. And then I'm like, yeah, but it's super cool. And how did you guys come up with, I mean, guy from New York, guy from London, you come up with Psycho Bunny as your logo. I'm gonna let Robert speak to that, but to your point, um, there are a lot of brands out there and a lot of logos, whether other animals or alligators or polo courses or whatever, but, Fake polos, cool. but any real dynamic entrepreneur has to kind of challenge the status quo. So our logo, the bunny with crossbones, when you look at it, it evokes an emotion and it, it really, uh, Robert would say, shakes a stick or at, at the status quo. And, and people uh, kind of gravitated to, to that in the duality of a bunny skull and crossbones. But Robert could speak to the evolution or at least the, the, in, the infancy of the brand. So, I mean, the very beginning, you know, when we're talking 15 years ago, everyone in the whole world is doing skull and crossbones in some format or another. Um, I'd introduced it um, on a necktie with a brand I work for in London called Drake's of London. Um, the, the, just uh, from a 1930s archive, there was a skull and crossbow. It just, everybody gravitated towards it. Um, so in just sort of reading into that and seeing what everyone else was doing, it's like, well, how do we make a skull and crossbones different? People were doing various things, teddy bears, dogs, everything with a crossbone on it but there was nothing with any personality or duality, as Rob mentioned. And, um, you know, you take a skull and crossbone, what does it represent? Pirates. It's like the first true democracy, period. You know? <laughs> Pirate ships, 17th century, British Navy, straight into Nassau, Bahamas, sailing up and down the East Coast. There's seeped in history here, and they're risk-reward You know, they went out of their way to, to, to seek reward. And at the end of the day, it was shared. It was a true democracy. Everything was voted upon as a crew. And then, you know, how do you make that a little bit less aggressive and bring some passion and some fun into it? You got a rabbit. A bunny. <laughs> you look at a rabbit, you smile. I mean, it's, it's the funniest looking mammal on the planet. I mean, but by the same token, it's powerful, it's strong, it's positive, and it's easily identifiable. So just the combination of the two, I felt gave us this yin and yang personality, this black and white. And it was just this whole emotion of, you know, if, if, for example, in Japan, we have a, a tremendous following in Japan. How do you make something that can be perceived as negative more friendly and more welcome? And in Japan, if an item does not have a sense of well-being, for example, if a, if a vehicle, a motor vehicle, if the, the headlamps and the grill don't smile, if they frown, it doesn't succeed in their, in their market. That's awesome. So for us, it was automatic. If we want to be strong and successful worldwide, and particularly in Japan, it needs to be this passive aggressive. That's awesome. Well, I have a business partner, speaking of yin and yang and white and black, my business partner is Warren Moon. And when I went into a partnership- Great player. My, yeah, great guy too. But my dad warned me. He had the three rules of partnership. 
Number one, don't go into a partnership. <laughs> two, if you're gonna go into a partnership, make sure your partner has more money than you. And three, <laughs> if you're not gonna listen to rule one or two, go back to rule number one. Um, and I've been blessed because uh, as you know, a partnership is much more difficult than a marriage. You spend more time with your partner than you do normally with your spouse if you're gonna be successful. And uh, there's a lot more risk uh, involved than a normal marriage. I, at least I felt that way with Warren as well. But on the other hand, it is like my marriage that I always said there's no perfect woman, especially for me. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no perfect woman in the world, but there is a perfect woman for me. And I got blessed and found that woman. And I think I found that in my partner. What is the yin and yang in this relationship? Because obviously, like Warren and I, we're, you know, we joke around, we're twins. But this, I can see the same thing but with you guys. There's a complementary oneness, but you're very different. Well, we joke straight off the bat, we're Irish twins. <laughs> we're both Roberts. We both have a G in our last name. We're both left-handed. I mean, there, oh, two left-handed, that's yeah. really a statistical I, mess. I, I also think on, on a more serious note, you, 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 know, you have to have mutual respect for each other. And when Robert and I were starting, um, Rob was the creative, the design, end of the business, and I was more the, and by the way, there's overlap in all aspects, sure. but I was handling more of the logistics and the sales with uh, our relationships with some people that I had known for a while at Nordstrom or Bloomingdale's, and Rob had known some people at Barney's. So there's gotta be a mutual respect and, uh, and, a, and a mutual admiration, uh, and you have to stay in your lane. And, and I think if that mutual respect exists, and by the way, not only were we from we're Irish twins, so to speak, but we were from two different cultures. I mean, even though Rob is a, a Londoner per se, and I'm from New York, it's still it's it's still England and the U.S. and um, and there probably are wider gaps of examples. But to me, it's about mutual respect and admiration and watching each other's back and treating each other like a brother, which I'm sure is the same way you are with Warren. I mean, it's. Um, it's just but, but when we you walked right in, such a bigger older brother. You went one Warren Moon as your older brother. Trust me, you know he's awesome. I, I, th I think to compartmentalize it and you know put it in simple terms, I think the success to any good partnership is making sure you give more than you take. Because I think at the end of the day, when you come to the level where everyone's successful, you divvy everything up because that's the way it is, and it, it's a that's a true partnership. If you walk into it looking at what you're taking out before you've started giving. It's never going to happen. Well, I'm going to give you my book because I think it goes beyond a partnership. I believe our whole lives are spent that way, is that in, rece I in receivership. I, I call it appreciation. I believe that if we're grateful for everything that we have and look at it in the respect that I'm going to add value to it and then give it away because I never know what I have until I've given it away, especially in a partnership. And I can see that mutual respect between the two of you and philosophy. I, I did a little bit of homework on you. Oh, and no. I know this is not an interview of you, but you know what I... What I found very touching is um, how you go out of your way to do something for the, um, the causes that you believe in. And I think for any successful entrepreneur, you have to give back, as you were saying, not only to your business, but find another vehicle. And um, <clears throat> that might be time. It doesn't necessarily need to be uh, measured in how much money you give, yeah. but it's about the commitment to it. And, um, and I know Rob is involved with um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I've got uh, two unusual charities I'm involved with, um, one called Steer It Straight, which is um, uh, uh, an organization for opioid abuse that tries to teach young kids to make the right behavioral decisions, as well as a, a great story that you would love as a sports fan. There's, um, there's a polo team at a Philly called Work to Ride. It's a program where kids get off the street and ride polo horses, and they've been able to compile a team that will compete on an intercollegiate level and play like UVA and Yale, and it's based out of Philly. And it was, uh, Brian Gumbel did a did a special on it in real sports. But whatever it is, you've got to have that something else to give back. And uh, as an entrepreneur, you can appreciate it's hard to balance all of those time commitments in addition to a family and in your personal life. Yeah, time, I believe, has a duality. But, uh, so so cool. much respect for what you do. Oh, vice versa. That's why. I mean, I wasn't joking. These guys are uh, the epitome of when I look at companies. And part of it is I love guys 
it wasn't as if you started with a ton of financing. I think you started with twenty five thousand oh, yeah, dollars or something like that. In credit cards. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool. And I, I, I have a person on my show, Don Lafrida, who's the number one full service franchisee in the world, woman, uh, who started her first Denny's uh, on her credit card and now has you know ninety one franchises and you know, but that's what it takes. We were talking earlier though that there is stress in starting you know, your business with a credit card, but there's also a freedom in it, right? We usually don't have as much to lose. Where I found it difficult being an entrepreneur is when I had a certain amount of success and we have to make a choice, um, are we going to take the money and run mm -hmm. or are we going to double down? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you guys have had an experience of having to double down and it came, what year was it that you guys? I think year six is the magic year in any business. Mm -hmm. you know, I, a successful I, business. Sometimes year six people are still. <laughs> I, I, I think year six is when you, you, know, you really have to take the decision that you're either gonna really up the ante and really get, get behind it and go to the next level, or you're just gonna spin your wheels and stay where you are. And you know, we're at year 14 uh, this coming year. Awesome. Uh, but year six for us was a difficult year. We had to make decisions on expansion. We had to make decisions on hiring more employees, and and I. But I have to say, you know, for Rob and I, we both had two jobs up until three years ago. You know, I, I sold handmade English shoes. That was my job. I traveled the whole country with eighty pounds of, of shoe samples, <laughs> and I did trunk shows. And Rob had his tie factory. Yeah. And the one thing that kept us awake at night was making a payroll. And, you know, there was one period in time about seven years ago um, and we owed a million dollars to our, our manufacturers, but we still made payroll and we still managed to, to flow ourselves through and, and actually eventually become even with everyone. But we never knocked one company. And you know what? We still work with those same factories. It, and I think it's Great. important it, it, as you grow, it's it's having transparency and trust with your partners, meaning your vendors. And when Rob and I first went to Peru, which is where we sourced the majority of our, our cotton products or the products in the country, and they saw a, a bunny skull and crossbones, they looked at us and left. And here are two guys at, at a trade show <laughs> yeah. at a, in we Peru. Be <laughs> and, and they're like, are you kidding me? And they're coming off getting burned by some bigger companies. But to Rob's point, those are the people that we still work with and those relationships and those bonds make your job or your livelihood or our passion much more enjoyable and fulfilling and, um, and, 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 and enjoying the ride. I mean, every day is like, man, I, I, we could tell you stories off the record that would, would, would make you laugh and you could write a book and we could write a book. Or but, on the record and make it a greater. <laughs> right, but, but I'm saying it's like those challenges it, embrace the ride because that's what it's about. And if I was gonna ask you, Rob, uh, Robert, uh, what's your favorite quality that you look up to, right? For, for me, my favorite quality of Warren is what I call the majesty of calmness. He has a situational knowledge of, since he was 18 years old, of being under enormous pressure and being able to keep this level head where my personality, especially when he met me, was very volatile. When I ran Lee Steinberg, the sports agency, sure. you know, I, I'd, lo I'd have really, really high highs and really, really low lows, and I lived every emotion. And there was Warren Moon, he could run off the field after winning an AFC championship, you know, and all he would give is this, and he would throw the interception to lose the Buffalo game, and all you see is him shake his head. And that's the way he lives his life, in a majesty of calmness, and I trust that. And I love that about him, because I can come in and rant like a crazy old Italian lady, and he'll just breathe deep and look at me and say, are you done? You know, these are all illusions. You know, what do you, you know, what is the quality like that you look up most to? I, th I think with Rob, um, the, the, the strongest quality that, that he has is the fact that he's always up. You know, the two of us have been through some pretty dark times. We've been through some pretty phenomenal times. And like your dark. logo, dark and light. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, life, everyone has their up and down, you know, it's, you can never always be bouncing along. But I can say whether I'm in Italy or I'm in, in, in Japan or if I'm in London or even if I'm in New York City, I know at four o'clock in the morning, this guy's on his feet most days of the week and he's in the gym at five. And I tell you what, there is a grounded confidence that I know I can pick up the phone. And we both relate. I mean, whilst I might be more creative and he's much stronger in sales, we're both salesmen. We understand what a relationship is about. So whether it's a customer, and by the same token, if a customer rang us in the middle of the night, we're taking the call. 
Yes. We're not avoiding anything, and that's always been a fundamental benefit of our relationship. We have that common understanding. You know, this is for entrepreneurs, so I think this is a really big point I, I see when I manage people. Mm-hmm. You know, they create a void or a shortage or an obstacle because they don't illuminate and the integrity is not there to confront an issue. And then it just gets worse. I agree. Right? You're drawing, and I keep on saying, stop, call immediately. You know, and I've done that. I've been in startups where the bills were racking up, and I was what Lee Steinberg called kind of my future self. And I literally called and said, hey, I just want to let you know I'm not able to pay that at this time. Um, I'd like to continually order. So if I paid up front and continue to maintain that balance, I promise you I'll do my best to continue, but the only way I'm gonna pay that balance is if you keep on giving me, but I won't take it on credit anymore. You know, and they certainly, they made the investment in me. They believed in me. What do you believe in with this, Robert? Oh, wow, that's a loaded question. Yeah, I mean, I mean I um, easy questions. <laughs> you know, um, the, the, the thing I, I love about Rob is, um, you know, is our, our transparency, our level of communication, what's on his mind, he says it, and um, the, the level of trustworthiness and the fact that he's got my back in the most difficult times um, and vice versa. To me, um, it's, uh, I have a sister that I love dearly, but I never had a brother, and um, he's my brother. And, and, um, and when, when you have a brother you love, then you know that speaks for itself, and uh, or a family member you love, and got all brothers and, and uh, sisters. So yeah, I get it. and <laughs> in the end of the day, you know uh, we can sit down, have a beer or a whiskey, and have a good laugh at ourselves. Who likes the beer and who likes the whiskey? Well, uh, we're kind of partial. I mean, I'm become a big Scotch whiskey drinker. But, nice. you know. <laughs> oh, he likes a good pint. But you know, at the end, yeah. of, the, exactly. at the, at the end of the day, and I agree with Rob, but the reality is, it's when you, when all said and done, you look in the mirror. It's about, it's not about who you can live with. It's about who you can't live without. And that's wow. That's the big thing. That's. I love that. I'm gonna put that in my next book because that's. Uh, I think I'll tell my wife when I get home at midnight tonight. <laughs> it's not, and that's see if she says. Actually, I can live without you. Um, all right. <laughs> Normally, I have a last question, but I have the last two questions, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Um, I'll start with this, Robert. Uh, Robert, there, you're creating a legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, when it's all said and done for your uh, oxymoronic logo, uh, which I can say because I went to Occidental and I live an oxymoronic life, but what legacy would you love to be known as a brand, there has to be a legacy for you guys. I know there's much more than, than just making money. What legacy do you want to leave? I think that uh, just for everything that we've done, I mean, not to, to, to make this too long, but we're necktie guys. So we started out, everything you look at is in the palm of your hand. When you're in the clothing industry, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're in like a um, you know, couture business, you put everything on your shoulder and you look in the mirror. So our perspective is already different. So I'd like to be known for our quality. You know, I like to, we stand there and when you look at something, you know, you're not, just by wearing Psycho Bunny, you're not trying to be cool, you are cool. It's a little bit of a difference, there's a subtle difference there, but it makes sense. So we want longevity to our product, we want timeless style, and yet at the same time we want to give the person who's wearing it the confidence that they don't even have to think about it. They're going to put it on and they know that every time they take it out of the, of the wardrobe or every time that it comes back from the hotel laundry, it's going to be the same and they're going to walk through life. To me, that's all it is. It's about consistency, quality. And, you know, we have the saying internally, honesty has gone out of fashion. Hmm. It doesn't exist anymore. And, you know, we're, we're trying to bring that back. Cancel that, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, as a big fan and client of yours, you know, that quality was what grabbed me. And then I became attracted to the logo. But moreover, because I travel so much, you know, there's certain luggage I have to have because nothing takes wear. But the difference is things can take wear, but then they're uncomfortable. And you have, of of all the brands I wear, I would rather travel in Psycho Bunny because it looks sharp. I feel there's an energy to it that matches my personality. And I also can sleep on a plane in it and not only be comfortable all night like it's pajamas, but wake up in the morning and show up at Entrepreneur Live and get on stage and I look cool and it looks perfect. So you, you've reached your legacy already and will continue to, to push it on. Um, different question for this, Robert. 
Sorry. Okay. You get all the easy I was going to comment. Go ahead, please um, comment. Comment first. I think, we got plenty of time. Um, from a business perspective, uh, the legacy that's important to me um, is really trying to connect to the youth in our, let's say, our in the United States, because we're an American, Anglo-American brand. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, it's very important for me, if there was one legacy that I could put forward, is for the youth in America, um, especially um, minority youth, to encourage them to, to build their self-esteem, to take chances and go out there and start a business. And don't be afraid to fail, because I've failed. I know he's failed. I, you may have failed, too. I don't, oh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm but, still failing. But we need, to, we need to build these youth people that are young that want to be entrepreneurs and get them to believe in themselves and get them to take chances and get them to accept failure. Because when you fail, it's very humbling. Yeah. And so for me, that, uh, that legacy won't be intertwined into the brand, but whatever I can do, speaking to young kids, I'll go into some inner city schools in Newark, for example, and speak to young kids and just get them to say, hey, you can do whatever you want. And that's the beautiful thing about this country we live in. A dream like this, with this type of logo, anything is possible. That's what I love about America. Go ahead. Can I just add? Yeah, yeah keep on adding. I think, I think, we'll most, I think one of the things most recently said, or I don't know if he originated it, but Jay-Z, I can quote him. He said, I never learn from my successes, only my failures. Yeah. I love that one as well, which leads into my last Sorry, question. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's perfect, because it leads into my last question. And uh, I always say there's no setbacks, there's only setups. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've lived my life that way. I've, you know, been bankrupt like most great entrepreneurs, and it was the best, I tell people, the best thing. It saved my life because I learned radical humility. Up until 35, I hadn't lost money. I hadn't made a mistake. I was a millionaire nine months out of law school. I thought that everything I did, that I didn't need help. Um, now, we talk about the youth, and I believe in empowering the youth and setting the seeds for the future. And I work with, in, on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters in San Diego, and you know I have four kids. But I always like to ask one person, since we have two, I'm going to, you're welcome to join your comments, but Gosh, what advice? Being set up here. Yeah, you are. This is set up, not set back. Oh, boy. What, what, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? It, my advice would be to determine what your passion is, um, whether it's uh, photography, writing, and pursue that passion. Because as you know, when you get a little bit older, you don't want to regret anything. Yeah. And if you can identify what that passion is, I find that you will have a better opportunity to succeed based on your commitment towards your passion. So my advice is, or not my advice, but what I would say to a young 18 year old is, find out what you love. And then don't let anything get in your way. Don't, and don't ever accept no and kick down every door because when we walked into Nordstrom and some of these cu <laughs> customers and they saw a psycho bunny and they almost like laughed us out of the freaking room. was there on the shelf. And then we got them to take a chance. And, and you just need someone that will believe in you and, and give you an opportunity. And you know, and then we're in, we're, we're sitting on a, a selling floor in, in Dallas, North Park, Nordstrom, and we're outperforming other, let's say, national brands. Um, it's, it's, that's my advice is find out what you love and then go for it. And you can always adjust and adapt, but, and don't let anything stop you. And don't let anyone tell you no. And don't be afraid to fail. That's awesome. Anything to add? Um, I think, yeah, I think to, in today's age, I think it's really relative to, to comment on the fact that we're all compartmentalized and we're slaves to social media and we're <laughs> slaves to our environment. And I think just to add to what Rob said, I think to, to find your key interest in life, I think sometimes you need to switch off. And, you know, for me, I find that is whether it's cycling or running or skiing or I'm just, I'm a big game fisherman. I'm an offshore fisherman. So I'm like when I'm 100 miles offshore, I've got no cell phone. That's awesome. But that's where some of my greatest ideas and thoughts come from because you're in the moment. You know, you can't focus on anything else other than what you're doing, and that's when your mind frees up. That's awesome. Well, you two represent to me not only a great brand and a great partnership, but that you can see the passion, the purpose, and the rarity is you've 
evolved enough to find profitability, which I want to congratulate you for, because that's not easy. A lot of people have their passion. They, they seek their purpose, but to tie profitability, to be compassionate capitalists like both of you are, uh, I have not made a mistake by begging, screaming, and telling my guys, you've got to find the two Robs. <laughs> I, I need to have them on the playbook. Uh, so thank you, Robert and Robert, Golding and God, God Lee. God and, and L, the God and Gold of LLC is right here. Psycho Bunny, the founders. This is Dave Meltzer. Thank you for joining me on Entrepreneurs, the Playbook.